Listen to Psalm 92, verses 1 through 4 from God's inerrant word for our call to worship this morning. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness by night with a ten-string lute and with a harp, with resounding music upon the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by what you have done. I will sing for joy at the works of your hands. Shall we continue to worship by turning in our hymnals to hymn number 100? and 37, standing as we sing to the glory of God. Shall we stand and sing together? Fathers, we come before you at the throne of grace. We come with hearts filled with praise and with thanksgiving unto you for that gift that you gave to each one of us, your only begotten Son. We thank you, Heavenly Father, we come together to worship you in that name that is above every name in heaven and in earth below, the name of Jesus Christ. Bless us with the ministering power of your Holy Spirit. May your name be lifted up. May it be praised and may it be glorified, for we ask and pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, and please be seated. And good morning. We welcome each and every one of you into God's house this morning, and we know that he's going to bless you in this hour that we worship him together. And I greet you in the name of a risen and a soon-coming-again Savior. 
I want you to turn to someone, but as you do it, don't shake hands. We've got the flu season upon us. Turn and wave to someone and say, hi, good morning, how are you doing? Announcements to call to your attention. First of all, I call your attention to those friendship pads. They're directly in front of you in the pew there. It only takes a moment. You sign it, you pass it along. It's a great help in our ministry here. Now, immediately after church today at 1215, we have a happy birthday Jesus party for everyone. It's not just for children, it's for children of all ages. They invite you to come and have a good time of fellowship downstairs immediately after church this morning. Now, during the coming week, Wednesday evening, there is no midweek service this week, and our youth group, group ministry will be resuming on January the 7th. However, on Wednesday evening, we have a tree lighting ceremony. Once again, a good time of fellowship, one with the other. You're in God's house, and you're worshiping him through fellowshipping one with the other. I invite you to be here, and be here, please, at 7 o'clock p.m. I know it says 7.30 in the bulletin, but make it 7 o'clock Wednesday evening, please. December the 13th, next Saturday, from 9 until 11. This is a deadline, 11 o'clock. All Christmas flowers and poinsettias will be in the church. Each one marked, given in a memory or in honor of. And if you haven't taken advantage, there's a flyer in your bulletin. And it gives you the opportunity of ordering a poinsettia. And uh, it's uh, eight and a half dollars per plant. They're all the same size. They're all the same color. No problems. The only thing is, all you have to do is fill this out. You don't have to go to the store to get one. All you have to do is come here on Christmas, and your plant will be up here on the platform. And it's all done by our senior citizens, and we thank them so much for taking care of that. But today is the last day that you can order. So please keep that in mind. That green flyer in your bulletin, today is the last day that you can order poinsettias. And our annual Christmas card exchange is now available. It's in the long hallway to my left and to your right. And you can save by using this exchange for Christmas messages and salutations to those that are in our church family. We hope you take advantage of it. Our flowers this morning are presented to the glory of God. One is in loving memory of Chip Lanning's 95th birthday from his wife, Eleanor. The second is a loving honor of my mother, Amy Dowg, on her 96th birthday from Amy Julian. And we, we thank you so much for beautifying our sanctuary this morning. These are all the announcements I have. I'm going to ask the ushers, if they will, to go forward now as we continue to worship our living Lord by giving unto him our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings.
Shall we rise and sing our doxology together? Father, we continue to lift our voices in praise and certainly thanksgiving unto you. Thank for Heavenly Father for your many blessings in our life, thanking you for Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior. There are others, our Heavenly Father, who need to know the truth concerning Jesus Christ. So we give out of the love that is within our hearts to you and to your work. Bless the gift, bless the giver. Our Heavenly Father may both be strengthened and let it be all to your honor and to your glory. For we ask and pray it all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
Thank you very much, choir, for bringing to us such a sweet and truthful message in music. We always appreciate your blessing our ears and our hearts with your messages. Now, there's a few things I need to share with you before we actually uh, pray together. Uh, first of all, I trust that you have noticed things look a little differently inside here than they did last Sunday you were here, and uh, in terms of decorations. And uh, next week it'll even be more different. But uh, these folks don't want to be mentioned by name, but I overrule what they want because I think it's important for the rest of us to know who does what uh, to make this happen. But Harold and Ruth Bodine, Larry and Paula DeMarc, John Del Percio, Carolyn Meldrum, Sandy Massantonio, Donna Morrow, Barbara Hawk, Chip Coffin, Joe Juckett, Dom Pizzetti. They did it all. And you can... <laughs> I really appreciate all that they, that they did, and more will be done for next week. Now I want to extend a special greeting and welcome back to uh, one that's been faithful to us for, I don't even remember how many years, lots and lots and lots of years. I'm referring to our good friend and faithful uh, servant of the Lord, member of this church, Ed Pinter, is finally able to be here with us. He's in the back, and uh, he's, he's with his uh, son, Dr. Mark Pinter, and we're glad that he is here also as well. And please, after the service, be sure to give him, each of them, your special word of welcome back. And then uh, also, Bill and Carol Owen are here with us from New Hampshire, somewhere. Where are they? There they are, right there. They have been, uh, they were faithful members here before they insisted on moving to New Hampshire and came back here where it's warmer, uh, at least for this weekend and no snow, so give them a welcome back as well, please. All right, very good. Now on a more serious note, uh, well, let me do the, the fun stuff, and then we'll get uh, serious for a moment. We have calendars as you leave today, those wonderful Rockwell calendars, and also the pocket calendars, and in here is the, uh, the Bible readers, different uh, assignments for each day to read the Bible through completely in one year's time. They're all to my left in the long hallway. And then as you perhaps are aware of, uh, the country of the Philippines has been struck in a very devastating way by a typhoon. And our own Yovita family, who's normally here with us, they're very involved in uh, the life in the Philippines there with a the ministry to uh, the uh, poverty-stricken areas in the mountains of the Philippines. So that's where they are now. And uh, they're very humble people. They don't tell you all that they do uh, for the Lord in the Philippines. You learn of their ministry through other people. But one of the little things they do that we would take for granted is today you are going to drink uh, from plastic cups as we share communion together. And uh, Mrs. Jovita takes those plastic cups and instead of them being thrown away, takes them home and washes them. And when they collect a shoebox filled with these cups, they are sent to the poverty-stricken churches in the Philippines where they are not used once. They are so tenderly cared for, they get months and months out of the same cup because they're so poor. So, uh, if they were here, I would not be telling you that story, but they're really hands-on people. We need to pray for the people of the Philippines as they go through this devastating storm, and uh, we will then discover how we can help them in other ways as well. And then uh, our Bible readers... Uh, the year's drawing to a close. If you've read completely God's Word in one year's time this past year, please put your name on a slip of paper. Just give it to me so we can recognize 
with your achievement with a personalized certificate uh, the second Sunday of January. And then let's pray for our nation in all of its complications. Uh, it's still the greatest land of blessing that uh, by God's grace, but still it's a land that needs our prayer, support our leaders, our people, uh, our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world, but here at home as well. Now, a few names not on our prayer list. Sharon Vesher, well, actually she is on the prayer list, but Sharon is back in the hospital. Uh, she's in Virtua in Voorhees and uh, trying to figure out what is her difficulty. And then Marie Brennan was in the hospital. She had a heart attack, but she is home. She's doing well. So we praise the Lord for that. And then Shirley Ebersole, uh, she fell and broke her wrist. And so she is in the care facility and we're glad for that, but she needs our prayer support. Mary Snyder is home from her, recovering from her surgery. Norm Thompson is preparing for future surgery. And Nick Stegall uh, and Bob and Cheryl Green, Connie Lampier, Amy Dow. Today's her 96th birthday, and the family's going to be there with her. And uh, But pray for that family as well. And Chuck Marshall and George Pearson Jr., uh, and all the folks that are on our prayer list need our prayer support. Our missionary for the week, this is a wonderful time of the year for us. It's also a special time of the year for the Jewish people, and we support a variety of uh, missions to the Jewish people. Messianic Jews is one of them that we need to pray for all of this week as they bring the gospel of Jesus Christ the Messiah of Israel, to the Jewish people around the world. Let's go to prayer together, and you pray privately and silently for a few moments, and then I'll close in prayer. Let's pray together. We continue to humbly pray at your throne of grace, O most gracious, almighty God, wonderful Heavenly Father. You are so unique in the way you have created each of us individually. You are so powerful in the way you have created the universe and all that which is part of it. And so we just come, Heavenly Father, with hearts filled with praise and adoration and thanksgiving for your uniqueness, for your holiness, your righteousness, your justice. We come with thankful hearts, Father, for the experiencing the overabundance of your grace and mercy and love. How Wonderful it is to know, Father, that our Savior Jesus Christ is alive. He is coming again. He is indeed the author and the finisher of our salvation. We thank you for the gift of faith that enables us to invite him to, to be our Lord and our Savior, to trust him as such, and to live each day the way you would like us to, to live for you until Jesus comes for each of us. Father, whenever we disobey your word, whenever we disobey your will, we know that your heart is deeply grieved. May we not become so callous in regards to our sins that we, we think that you don't, it doesn't upset you anymore when we sin against you. Yet, Father, as grieved as you are, you love us. You care to cleanse us. You desire to have us come, confess our sins, repent of our sins, so that you can cleanse us from that which is an unrighteous in your sight. How we praise you, Heavenly Father, for answered prayer. As we pray for others, we know that you are a God of healing, a God of miracles, a God of answering all of our prayers according to your perfect will. So when we pray for others, we know that your will shall be done, 
shall be unfolded in their lives as you know best. We pray that we'll be used as your helping hands of blessing in their lives as they go through their time of need. Gracious Father, we thank you for America, and we pray for our leaders, elected and selected. Father God, may they seek your word, seek your will, as they endeavor to lead us. Bring a spiritual revival across the world and our land while Jesus tarries in his return. Heavenly Father, we're glad that we can pray wherever we are, but especially we're glad that we can pray now for our missionaries around the world, but especially for the Messianic Jews, that they'll have opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, to the people of Israel, wherever they might be. And we know that's your desire for us to pray for them, and that we gladly do. Now, Father, we believe that Jesus Christ taught his disciples to pray this prayer, which we now gladly pray together ourselves. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Shall we stand and sing yet another wonderful song of this time of the year? 130. Let's stand and sing together, please. Let's stand and sing together. our opportunity to reach out to people in need 
as God enables our Board of Elders and myself to do that. We remind you that any gift you give to this offering is not used for any other purpose other than to enable us to help people who are in legitimate need. If you desire to do that, we ask that you give prayerfully, lovingly, and as generously as you can. Let us receive our fellowship offering at this time. loving hearts. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this opportunity to be your loving hands of blessing in the lives of others. We ask you to bless these gifts as they, we present them to you in the loving name of Jesus Christ. And all of God's people joined and said together, Amen. Now will you join me in your copy of God's inerrant word in the Old Testament book of Isaiah. We're going to look at quite a few scriptures, not in depth, but in reference to God teaching, God's teaching us about how wonderful he is. And uh, I remind you again and again, whether we're looking at an entire book of God's Word, or whether we're looking at a chapter, or a portion of Scripture within a chapter, or a single verse, we are always looking at what God perfectly inspired to be written. And here in Isaiah chapter 9, that marvelous passage of Scripture where God, several hundred years before it actually happened, announced to the world what his plan was and still is today. The coming of Jesus Christ to be the one and only Savior of the world, the Messiah of Israel, and then for the coming, his return as the King of Kings. And I, I'm remind, mindful of when I think of prophecy, when God made this prophecy several hundred years before it actually was fulfilled, and that it took that long for God to choose to unfold his, fulfill his prophecy. We only know about 24, 7 days, weeks, months, years. For us, that's a long time to live to be 100 or more, lots of years. And it is for us. But I remind you, not for God. Peter tells us a thousand years or a day, a day is a thousand years. Meaning, 
God says, I'm not bound by time like you are. I'm not limited by time like you are. So for several hundred years, it was but a second for God's timing. When you feel you're discouraged because when in the world is God going to do what I need him to do? Don't despair. For you it's been a long time, but for God it's but a blink of an eye. And God's will shall be done. Let's read about it in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 and then we'll pray. God says through the prophet Isaiah, For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. May God add his blessing upon this, the reading of his holy word. May we pray together. Heavenly Father, you know every mind who is here today. You know every heart. You know what we're thinking, what we're feeling. And thank you, Heavenly Father, that the Holy Spirit is able to transcend our thoughts and our feelings so that you can bring forth into our minds and our hearts the teaching of your Holy Word for, in a, for our lives in a life-changing way. We pray, Heavenly Father, for salvation to come upon anyone within this place of worship or watching by television or through the Internet. Heavenly Father, if there be anyone in need of salvation this day, we humbly ask for that to be done, knowing that that's your desire for all to come to repentance. For those of us who proclaim gladly Jesus Christ is our living Savior. We thank you that you're, you seek to bless our minds and our hearts as well through the Holy Spirit and your written word. We welcome your blessing upon each of us in that name which is above all other names, that of Jesus Christ. And again, all believers joined and said together, Amen. I can honestly tell you, Carol and I just love this time of the year. We love everything about Christmas, the celebration especially of the coming of our living Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But we enjoy everything else because we understand in our own hearts the spiritual meaning of it all. And I realize that not everyone agrees with that type of thinking, but we enjoy it. We've never lost the wonder, never have lost the awe of the coming of Jesus Christ. And I thank God for that. But we enjoy also watching those marvelous Christmas classics. And I just quickly jotted down some that we enjoy every year. White Christmas and Holiday Inn and Miracle on 34th Street, Scrooge, Christmas Vacation, The Christmas Story, The Polar Express. Just some of the ones that we enjoy watching. But one of our favorites, of course, is the movie called It's a Wonderful Life with Jimmy Stewart and Donna Reed. And in essence, what that movie to us is all about is the difference one man can make in everyone's life. And I look at Jesus Christ and I say, Jimmy Stewart... The movie was fictional, not real, fun to watch, inspiring and encouraging and refreshing, but not real. But Jesus Christ is inspiring, renewing, refreshing, and he is real. And just look at one word in this Isaiah 9, 6. Ah, there's lots and lots of sermons just on this one verse, but... I'm captivated by that word wonderful. The word wonder means in all of it all. And again, I say, I stand in all when I think of the coming of Jesus Christ. First of all, I, I stand in all the wonder of his gift. 
Isaiah 9, 6 talks about, God says that a child will be born and a son will be given as a gift. Now, the son was not born because he has always lived. Jesus Christ did not come alive when he was born of a virgin in that stable so long ago. He's always lived. In eternity past, Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is same yesterday from all eternity past up to December the 6th. Today, December the 7th, he's still the same, and he will be for all eternity to come. His gift is wonderful. To be born of a virgin, to leave his throne in glory, to come as a gift, to be granted unto us who desire to receive it. I love Isaiah 53, verses 3 to 5. Jesus Christ was despised, rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. The wonder of his gift for you and for me. Don't be discouraged. Jesus Christ is alive. The wonder of his grace, amazing grace, how sweet the sound, that saved a wretch like me. The wonder of his grace. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, my grace is sufficient to you, for you, for my strength, is made perfect in your weakness. Hallelujah for that. I'm so glad that I don't have to live this life on my own strength because I ain't going to make it. But on God's strength, yes, indeedy, God will bring us through it all. Born of a virgin, sinless, so that he could become our perfect, sacrifice acceptable to God, satisfying to God on our behalf. By his grace, we are saved. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, I love it, I love it, I love it. Because God says, whoa, 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 don't you dare take one fiber of credit for your salvation. It's all by my grace. For by grace you have been saved by faith. It has nothing to do with you lest you boast. And I'm so glad for that because if you're honest with yourself, you would admit, boy, if it was based on our good works, we'd be out bragging each other who did what more than anybody else. But by God's grace, we are saved. The wonder. The wonder of his greatness, the wonder of his gift. Never lost that wonder. I will be tearing up. I have been tearing up. Thinking of God's grace, God's gift, his grace. His greatness, his greatness. Psalm 75, verse 1. We give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks for your wondrous works. Declare that your name is near. Psalm 75, verse 1. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And there in Isaiah 9, 6, mighty God. And uh, personally, I feel sorry for folks who don't believe in God. Because to me, they're taking credit themselves or giving credit for the beauty of this magnificent universe that God has created. And we can't even figure out how to get the parking meters in Philadelphia to work correctly. 
and we're taking credit for this universe, what audacity man has. But when I look and I see a cloud, I say, God, you created that. When I see a rose, my favorite, pearled. When I look at snowflakes and I say, I don't understand. How could every flake be different? How can every leaf in a tree be different than the other? How can my fingerprints be totally different than any human being who has ever lived in this world? God is great. And we're worried about whether we're going to be able to have enough money to do whatever. Are we ever going to do it? And God is saying, don't you understand, dear child of mine, I am great. Stand in all of my greatness. Wonder at my goodness, my gift, my grace, my greatness, my goodness. God is good. God is good. I know we're surrounded by evil and evildoers. The insanity abounds around us, yes? I know that. But let's get our eyes off of Satan's evil works and get our eyes on God's goodness. He tells us in Psalm 34, verse 8, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I love that word, taste. You skinny, healthy people, you don't know what tasting is like. <laughs> la, 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 la. That's tasting. Well, I look at God, and God's saying, yeah, taste of my goodness. Enjoy it. Be invigorated by it. Psalm 86, verse 5, For you, O Lord, are good and ready to forgive. Psalm 100, verse 5, For the Lord is good his mercy is everlasting, 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 everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. That includes us. God's goodness. God's glory. God's glory. Isaiah 29, verse 14. Wonder at God's glory. Therefore, behold, I will again do a marvelous work among this, this people, a marvelous work and a wonder. <laughs> God's not done yet. Satan is not, Satan looks like he's winning. He has not won, and he won't win. And his glory is overriding Satan and all of his power. He's sovereign in his glory. And he overrules. Praise God for that. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 and 16. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are yet without sin. Therefore let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let me say with all the love that I can, if anyone is in this place of worship or watching by television or watching on the internet who has never invited Jesus Christ to be your personal Savior, understand that the wonder of Jesus Christ is what you're denying. When you deny Jesus Christ, you're denying what God has said about Jesus Christ. And I simply ask all unbelievers, what is it that you have going on in your life that can supersede the wonder of Jesus Christ? The answer has to be nothing. Well, the answer is, oh, no, no, money will do that, really? 
How long is that going to last? How Are you going to outlive your money? I don't think so. The old joke. I've done a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of funerals. I've never seen one with a hue hall behind the, by the, behind the hearse. You ain't taking it with you. Oh, well, I'm going to give it to all my children. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good luck with that one. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Sure. Nothing of this earth lasts forever, but God's glory does. And so I say, without Jesus Christ, you have no hope beyond what you now have. But with Jesus Christ, you have hope for all eternity. Come to Jesus Christ by faith, and he will honor his word. He will save you forevermore. If you haven't invited Jesus Christ to be your Savior, I know. I know about aches and pains. I used to hear about aches and pains. I know about aches and pains. I used to hear about people saying, I, I had difficulty walking. I know what that's like now. I used to hear people say, I can't remember why I went into that room. Now I know what they're talking about. But I don't dwell on that. What I dwell on is the wonder of God's gift that has nothing to do with my forgetfulness or my health. His grace that sustains me. I wonder at his greatness that means nothing in my life will ultimately defeat a child of God because of God's greatness or his goodness or his glory. The wonder of it all brings this life wonderfully to please God. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this one simple word in your awesome word, wonderful. Father, there are sagging spirits that need to be uplifted right now within the sound of this voice. There are bewildered minds that need clarity. There are mixed emotions that need to be dealt with. There, there's upsetment that needs to be calmed. But, Father, you are wonderful in dealing with all of that. And so miraculously bring it all together by your grace into our lives in a life-changing way. Bring anyone to salvation even now as we pray. And we'll rejoice with that salvation of one more to the angels in heaven. But thank you, Heavenly Father, for blessing us who proclaim Jesus Christ our Savior with the wonder of our Savior, in whose name we pray together. Amen. Now, as Lori plays for us, we ask that you enter into an attitude of prayer as we share the Lord's Supper together. While you continue to pray and meditate before the Lord, I remind you that this is indeed the Lord's Supper which Jesus Christ himself instituted so that disciples like us might come together in obedience to his word and remember what he did for us upon the cross, what he is doing upon us as our living Savior, what he will do for us when he comes again. You do not need to be a member of this church in order to share the Lord's Supper with us, but you must proclaim Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. If you do not, then I issue to you this very severe warning from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 
Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself, if he does not judge the body rightly. If you have invited Jesus Christ to be your personal Savior, then you are cordially invited to share the Lord's Supper with us. Continuing to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, For I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Elder Joe Juck is going to come and lead us in our prayer of thanksgiving. Heavenly Father, you are wonderful, merciful, graceful. Your righteousness has created a shield around you that wickedness cannot enter. But you, in your love, reached out and give the, us the salvation through Christ, through his cleansing, that all that call upon the name of the Lord will be saved and God will accept and we can pass through that shield that protects, covers us and shields us from all the unrighteousness as long as we stay faithful and keep to your word. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The scriptures go on to teach us from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that in the same way he also after supper took this cup and said this is the new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Elder Pizzetti is going to come and lead us in a prayer of thanksgiving. Right. O oh, heavenly, gracious, and most glorious Father, we thank you for your promises, the promise of eternal salvation, the forgiveness of sins, and the ultimate gift, your Son, our Lord and Savior, who made it all happen 
by willingly suffering on the cross, giving up his blood for us. Now as we partake of the cup, let us remember that he loves us. We ask this through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In loving remembrance of the blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed for the remission of our sins, let us partake of this cup together. If you desire to accept Jesus Christ, as your personal savior or to be baptized by immersion the way Jesus Christ was or for any other reason you're welcome to make your decision known to us by coming forward and as we sing our final carol together or I'll be glad to meet with you after the service let's stand and sing unto the Lord 131 infant holy infant lowly let's stand and sing together
Heavenly Father, thank you for honoring us throughout this hour. We humbly thank you for going with us as we are dismissed. And Father, we humbly ask you to bless us as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit raise us up with renewed faith that because Jesus Christ is alive, the best is yet to come. Amen and amen. Amen.